This is a tutorial on solving linear inequalities. The first thing we're going to talk about when we're solving linear inequalities is how to identify solutions of a linear inequality. Our first example here asks us, is 3, 0 a solution to y is greater than 2x minus 4? Well, to figure out if it's a solution or not, our first step is to plug in this point into this inequality. So we're going to plug in 3 for x and 0 for y. If we do that, we'll get 0, which is plugged in for y, needs to be greater than 2 times 3, which is what x is equal to, and then we subtract 4. Now we'll simplify this right hand side, 2 times 3 is 6, and then we subtract 4, and that's equal to 2. So our right hand side is equal to 2, and our left hand side is still 0, so we're left with 0 needs to be greater than 2. Well 0 is not greater than 2, this final inequality here doesn't make any sense. So that means, if this final inequality doesn't make sense, that this point is not a solution to this inequality. Let's try our next example. Here we have, is 1, 2 a solution to y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 3 halves? Well again, to figure out if this is a solution, we plug in 1 for x and 2 for y, and if we do that, we'll get 2 needs to be less than or equal to 1 half times x, which is 1, and then plus 3 halves. Now if we simplify the right hand side, we have 1 half times 1, which is just 1 half, and we add 3 halves to that, which is equal to 4 halves, or just 2. So what we get is 2 needs to be less than or equal to 2, which it is. 2 is equal to 2, and that satisfies our inequality. So since this final inequality makes sense, that means 1, 2 is a solution. Now next we're going to talk about how to graph a linear inequality. Here we're given y is greater than 3x minus 2. Well, to graph this, the first step is just to pretend that this is y is equal to 3x minus 2. And we're going to find points on this equality line, or this linear inequality. Now to do that, or to graph that line, we've got to look at this. This is in slope-intercept form, which means our y-intercept is at negative 2, or the point 0, negative 2, and our slope here is 3. So recognizing that, we can graph this. We'll start at our y-intercept, which is 0, negative 2, which is right here. And then our slope is 3, which means we have a rise of 3 and a run of 1. So if we go up 3 and over 1, we'll get a point right there. And if we do that again, 3 and over 1, we get another point right there. So we have our three points here, and we can graph our line. But we have to go back to our inequality equation here. This is a greater than. It's not a greater than or equal to. So this is the boundary line but our solutions are actually not on this line. This line does not represent solutions. So when we graph this line, we're going to graph it with a dotted line to show that it's just a boundary point and not an actual solution. So our line will look something like that. Now there's one last step here. Remember, this is a boundary line. It's not actually solutions to our inequality. And that means our solutions have to be on one side or the other of this line. So to figure out which side our solutions lie on, you pick a point anywhere on the graph and plug it in. I like to pick points that are easy to solve for, so I'm going to plug in the origin, or the point 0, 0. If I do that, I plug in 0 for y, and that has to be greater than 3 times x, which is 0, and then minus 2. The left hand side is just 0, 3 times 0 is 0, and then minus 2 would just be a negative 2. So our final solution here boils down to 0 needs to be greater than negative 2. Well, 0 is greater than negative 2, which means 0, 0 is a valid point to this 
linear inequality. And since that's to the left of this line, that means every point to the left of this line is a solution to this inequality. So then you would shade all the area to the left of the line. So it would look something like that. That's the graph for y is greater than 3x minus 2. Let's try this again. Here we have y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 3. Now our first step again is to pretend that this is y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 3. If we do that, we can graph the line because this is in slope intercept form. So that means this is my y intercept where we have the point 0, 3. And then my slope here is a negative 1 half. Well, knowing that, I can graph my line. My y-intercept is at 0, 3, which is right here. And then my rise is a negative 1, and my run is 2. So we would go down 1 and over 2. And we can do that again, down 1 and over 2. And we'll get a row of points like that. Now before we connect these points, we go back to our inequality. This is a less than or equal to. And since it's equal to, that means all the points in this line are valid solutions. So to demonstrate that, we would connect those points with a solid line, which would look something like that. Now again, we have one more step. We need to figure out what side of this line our solutions lie on. So you can pick a point anywhere on the axis. I like to pick ones that's easy to solve. So again, I'm going to pick the origin or the point 0, 0. And we plug that into our inequality. If I do that, I plug in 0 for y, which has to be less than or equal to negative 1 half, plug in 0 for x, and then plus 3. We're left with 0 on the left-hand side, which has got to be less than or equal to a negative 1 half times 0 is 0, so we're just left with 3 on the right-hand side. So we have 0 needs to be less than or equal to 3, which it is. So that means 0, 0 again is a valid point for our inequality, which means all the points below this line are solutions to our inequality. So we would shade in everything below this line. So our graph would look something like that. This is the graph of y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 3. Now lastly, let's see if we can write an inequality expression given the graph. Here we have a graph and we have our line here which is a dotted line which means we're going to have a less than or greater than sign because this is a dotted line and that is not a solution to this inequality it's just the boundary line. Now we need to find the equation of this, so let's find the equation of this line. Here we have a y-intercept at 0, negative 5. And we have an x-intercept here at negative 3, 0. Well, let's use our standard slope-intercept form, which would be y is equal to our slope times x, plus our y-intercept. Now our y-intercept is negative 5. We already found that. So we're down to y is equal to our slope times x minus 5. Now we just need to find our slope. So I'm going to plug in this other point, this negative 3, 0. If I do that, I plug in 0 for y. And that's equal to our slope times negative 3 minus 5. So we'll end up with 0 times negative 3m minus 5 move the 5 over, we'll get negative 3m is equal to 5, divide both sides by negative 3, and we get m is equal to negative 5 thirds. So that gives us the linear equation of y is equal to negative 5 thirds x minus 5. So that's the equation of this line, except we don't have an equation, we have an inequality but we need to figure out which inequality we have. So to do that, we'll plug in a point on either side of this line. Again, I'm going to plug in 
zero, zero. And if I do that, I plug in zero for y. That's equal to negative five thirds, zero for x, and then minus five. We ha still have zero on the left hand side. Negative five thirds times zero is zero, so then we're just left with a negative five on the other side. Now let's go back to this graph. I plugged in zero, zero, but zero, zero is not a solution. Everything below this line is what's shaded. So if this is not a solution, that means that this final solution here for zero, zero is not a solution, which means this expression has to not make sense. So if this doesn't make sense, that would mean zero would have to be less than negative five, because that wouldn't make any sense. So if that's less than, that means we can plug this less than sign back into this equation here instead of the equal sign. So our in linear inequality then would be y is less than negative 5 thirds x minus 5. So that's how you can find your inequality from a graph. And that completes the tutorial on solving linear inequalities.